Need for Speed Most Wanted is one of the highest rated and best selling games in the franchise, and I'm sure just about anyone who played it when they were younger would love the opportunity to wipe their mind of it today and play their favorite Need for Speed all over again for the very first time. Well, in a way, that opportunity has been given to me. See, I thought I had played Most Wanted. Growing up, I played Hot Pursuit and Hot Pursuit 2, Underground and Underground 2, and when Most Wanted released, I had just recently gotten a shiny new PSP and saw that the game was available on my fun new handheld. I played it and enjoyed it, and then by 2006, had picked up an Xbox 360 to play Carbon, Pro Street, and so on. It wasn't until a while later that I realized my critical error. See, Most Wanted isn't actually available on the PSP. What is, is Most Wanted 510 a similar spin-off game for the PSP that's really only a shadow of the real Most Wanted. So for years now, I've been wanting to return to 2005 to play the real Most Wanted, and last month, I booted it up for the first time ever and began my journey. Now, of course, this is a 17-year-old game, and it's going to be hard not to make some comparisons, intentional or not, to more modern titles. However, I have also played Underground 2, Carbon, and Pro Street, along with a handful of other older racing games, all within the past year or so. So I feel like my headspace is properly calibrated for this era of gaming. And wherever possible during this review, and of course while I was playing the game, I tried to compare against games that released around the same time, not to modern standards. Let's start this video off with some of my first impressions during my first few hours of play. Some may consider this sacrilege, but I did turn off the lovingly named Piss Filter. It may take away from some of the original charm of Most Wanted, but the game just looks so much better without it. And that being said, even today, Most Wanted's graphics do hold up. This footage is with no mods. The whole black box era of Need for Speed games used a really clean graphical style, with good art design and intelligent use of graphics budget on the more limited hardware of the time. This leads to the game still being really nice to look at, and there are plenty of spots, especially here around Rosewood, that are really pretty. The starting car lineup is also great. Realistic but cool budget sporty cars. I did get the extra 10 grand for having an underground 2 save, so I could have sprung for the golf, but I'm a JDM nut and the IS300 was calling me. One of my first disappointments while playing was realizing that not only was customization slimmed down in many areas, you can't even select individual bumpers or side skirts. It's full body kit or nothing but I get it, they wanted to take some of the focus away from customizing and put more of it on the races and police pursuits. My next fear was the realization that fast travel now existed, meaning I could effectively jump from one objective straight into the next without any ebbs and flows in the action or chances to get sidetracked exploring in the open world. This made me worried because I feared burning out and getting bored before the finish. If I could just jump from one event to the next, I thought the game might get repetitive. But of course, I pressed on, keeping an open mind, and within my first day, had taken down the first two Blacklist members. I left my first play session that day with a lot on my mind, both positive and negative. But as the week continued on and I waited for my next chance to play again on stream, an itch developed. I wanted to play. I wanted to say screw streaming the playthrough, I'll just jump on and take down a few more bosses tonight. And that was a really good sign. But I did hold out and continued my playthrough on stream week after week for a total of about 25 hours of gameplay before seeing the end credits roll. I shared plenty of thoughts and we had a great discussion at the end of the final stream, but I wanted to wait a while, let my emotions settle, and give the memory of my playthrough just a bit of time to age before really sitting down to collect my thoughts and write out this review. So now, let's jump into some more specific categories where I can share what I think about Most Wanted as a first time player in 2022. We'll begin with what car games are all about, the cars. And I want to talk about the car physics, because as I always say, you can't have a good driving game if the driving isn't good. 
and unfortunately, this is an area I wasn't very impressed with. Now, at higher speeds, everything is good, great even, when compared against some other need for speeds. You still need to brake for corners and take good racing lines, and the cars feel responsive and unique, something many arcade racers fail with. Cars in Most Wanted do feel very different from each other, and each have their own character to them. For me, I had two more minor issues. The cars just handle poorly at low speeds. This was not present really at all in Underground 2, but for Most Wanted and later Carbon, the low speed handling was tweaked and feels like driving on bumpy ice. The cars crab walk strangely, bounce for no reason, ignore any concept of weight transfer, grip, and physics, and just don't really feel that enjoyable. I felt initially like this was probably some attempt to add some drama to the driving and burnouts and peeling out of the garage, but I now wonder if it has to do with balancing the pursuits, and making sure losing your speed and momentum is a serious punishment. Either way, it's a flat downgrade from the underground handling model. Not a major one, I still had fun driving the cars, but a downgrade nonetheless. Now, this one is gonna break some hearts, but I just didn't really enjoy the speed breaker mechanic. To be fair and show some of my bias, I've never been a big fan of superpower gimmicky mechanics like this in racing games, but I also just don't feel like Speed Breaker was implemented super well. At its best, it should have been basically an action movie button, where everything goes slow-mo and you make an impossible dodge around traffic or pull a crazy tight corner into a back alley shortcut only to speed off into the sunset, but it rarely pans out like that. The heavily altered handling just saps way too much momentum, so when you come out of Speed Breaker, you find that your sick 100 mile an hour handbrake entry into the hairpin has left you two gears too high, going slower than the traffic you just dodged. I feel like they should have made it either more powerful by allowing you to keep more speed, or just not altered the handling at all, just giving you some more time to slow down and think about what move you want to make next. I ended up never really using Speed Breaker in races, only finding it useful for that extra oomph you get when plowing through police cars during a pursuit. Unfortunately for me, Speed Breaker just felt awkward, and while it obviously didn't take anything away, it didn't really add anything to my game experience. This is a feature that I'll admit probably was really cool if you played it when you were a kid, but I just don't think it aged well. Now let's talk about the car list itself, because I feel like one thing Black Box era Need for Speed games have always done really well is curating a solid car list, and Most Wanted is no exception. Like I said earlier, I think the starter cars are great, giving you a budget tuner from each major part of the world. But on top of that, the way your roster progresses as you work your way through the blacklist feels really natural to some sort of real car progression. For me, I started with the IS300 then grabbed the Supra early on, basically the Lexus's more sporty cousin. From there, I picked up the Porsche Cayman from Baron, which was amazing, and eventually got myself the legendary Murcielago. I also had a few sidecars. I used Earl's Evo for almost all of my police pursuits, and picked up this FD RX-7 as well. I love that the game allows you to hold on to and upgrade one car if you really want, but also encourages you to try new cars and have different cars for different purposes, achieved in part by utilizing the heat and impound strike system. I felt like there was always a cool car to look forward to, and you're always working your way up the ladder. The car progression feels great in Most Wanted. Also, I'm glad they took the hint after Underground 2 and removed SUVs entirely, keeping the car list more focused on actual sports cars. Finally, with the cars, I want to talk a bit more about customization. This is a clear low point, considering the games that surround Most Wanted. Underground 1 and 2 had customization that to this day is in many ways unmatched, and Carbon brought us the iconic auto-sculpt feature. Most Wanted, however, feels lacking in comparison. It feels like they gave us enough to still enjoy customizing cars, but didn't really spend any time innovating or improving on any features. Instead, slimming things down and removing features entirely like dyno and track testing, presumably to encourage more of a focus on the actual driving. Now, that said, unlike with Underground 2 and its star rating system, 
You are free in Most Wanted to build your cars however you want, meaning your endgame builds don't have to look like Wingo from the Cars movie. You can keep things relatively respectable, and I feel like I absolutely was still able to make some really nice looking builds, even by modern standards. In comparison to car games as a whole, Most Wanted's customization is still impressive, if not a bit dated, but it just falls short compared to its neighbors in the franchise. So let's get to the actual gameplay itself. Most Wanted's core gameplay loop revolves around the Blacklist. 15 bosses you need to defeat in order by winning races, completing milestones, and raising your bounty. I found this to be a great progression system that had just the right amount of length and challenge to keep me playing and entertained without feeling like the system was too drawn out, grindy, or boring after too much time. Even at the bottom of the list, taking down each boss feels rewarding as you make your way towards the top 10. The first handful of bosses have pretty easy challenges, only making you do a small handful of races and get in some really easy pursuits, but of course, naturally as you progress, the requirements grow, and eventually you could be spending a couple hours just on one boss. But it still never really slows down, because taking down each and every boss is its own victory, and never feels too far away. Even at the highest levels, you're only required to win 8 or so races. So the progression loop and pacing of Most Wanted is top tier in the franchise. In many areas, Underground 2 felt too grindy and had some spots where the pacing really slowed down or felt like you were getting stuck and Carbon just flies by too quickly. You can complete the entire game in under 10 hours, and the whole crew territory mechanic never really panned out. So although the overall gameplay loop of Most Wanted is incredible, I do still have some criticisms with more specific elements. Let's start by talking about the races. I think something probably everyone can agree on here is that the rubber banding in Most Wanted is a bit excessive. To be clear, rubber banding has its uses. It's a great way to balance the game for multiple skill levels and keep the races interesting. However, rubber banding in Most Wanted is simply far too overtuned or overused. This leads to two things. One, getting past often feels cheap. It doesn't feel like you were outplayed and outmaneuvered by a better driver. It feels like the AI turned on some extra power and grip so that they could get ahead, and that doesn't feel like a fair challenge. And the second, larger issue for me, is that it makes the majority of each race feel useless. For example, on a three lap race, I could be absolutely killing it on the first two laps, nailing every shortcut, dodging all the traffic, and staying 10 seconds ahead of my opponents. However, on the last lap, the AI just activates those rubber band powered turbochargers, and even though I'm still driving just as well, that 10 second gap gets washed away as I watch the AI clearly break all game physics to fly ahead of me in the last few turns. In an attempt to make the races feel engaging, they've instead made the first half of all the races feel kind of pointless. So unfortunately, I feel like the races are a bit of a low point for the Black Box era, with Pro Street taking a pretty clear win in that category in my eyes. This also applies to drag racing, which was pretty good in Underground, but far too complex and chaotic in Most Wanted, and then good again in Pro Street. Now let's talk about the pursuits, because this is the major standout gameplay feature of Most Wanted, and I've got some thoughts. Most Wanted brings the return of police to Need for Speed after being absent in the Underground games, and boy did they come back with force. I need to address this right away. The police AI in Most Wanted is incredibly impressive. It is so clear that there was so much dev time spent on this, making sure everything the player thought to do could be countered by the cops. The way they read you at low speeds and block you from getting out of a jam, the large variety of unique tactics they use to pit maneuver you or create moving roadblocks, the different units all having different styles and methods, it's honestly really impressive, and I can't think of any game, even modern game, that has created a police AI system more competent than this one. 
and I enjoy the way the pursuit and bounty systems are incorporated right into the main gameplay flow. In order to get the chance to race the next Blacklist member, you need to complete a set amount of challenges, like hitting 10 cop cars in a single pursuit, or racking up $100,000 in damage to the state. This is on top of the overall bounty over your head, that will start super small and reach well into the millions by the end of the campaign. It's a great way to break up the gameplay and make sure you aren't just going from race to race to race with nothing in between. The Blacklist system and the way it manages the pace of Most Wanted is phenomenal, and the pursuits are a strong element of that. However, I do have some issues as well. Like I mentioned with the racing, cheaty AI isn't fun to play against, and in order to keep up the intensity, the cops often cheat quite severely. They rubber band excessively, they spawn out of nowhere right around you, and can sometimes bust you in really odd, sometimes unfair ways. I should state here that getting busted is very punishing in Most Wanted. You lose everything you worked for in that pursuit, and reset your heat level, and get an impound strike. It's harsh, which is good, but it needs to feel fair. It's one thing to get busted because you made a bad call and the cops blocked you in with a smart maneuver, but when you're in the middle of a 15 minute pursuit with all your challenges complete and just trying to escape only to get busted because a cop spawned out of nowhere right in front of you, causing you to get stopped by a bad hitbox or physics issue, that isn't good challenge. The pursuits themselves are really fun and intense and can lead to some super exciting action movie moments. And while you're in that big pursuit, you're building up all that fun and forming all those good memories with the game. But if you get busted because of something that feels cheap, those good moments are taken away along with your bounty and heat levels. Not all, but a lot of the times I got busted in Most Wanted, it felt cheap. And instead of feeling like I was bested, it felt like the game put me in a situation I had no ability to get out of, and it turned what would have been an amazing chase and daring escape into a bad experience with the game. Whether or not I could evade pursuits was more down to luck than it was to skill. Now, I want to be super clear that this is kind of just a product of its time. Simple collision and hitboxes, spawning cars in and out around you, and iffy physics are all just kind of limitations of what Black Box had to work with at the time, with a limited time frame. And ultimately, I can't really point to any other game that did things better. In most other games though, the cops are a bit more of a pushover, or the systems aren't nearly as punishing. In Most Wanted, the stakes are much higher, so it feels way worse when things don't go your way. I also want to mention quickly the pursuit progression, which felt a bit untuned to me. Things can go from 0 to 100 and then back to 0 really quick. The early heat levels, for example, are kind of a total joke, and were probably the only times I felt truly bored playing Most Wanted, as I putzed along the highway at 80 miles an hour while a single cop struggled to keep up behind me, the whole time shouting through the radio about how I was evading arrest. Especially on heat levels 1 and 2, I had to actively try not to escape from the cops. And funny enough, a lot of the time I failed. I'd take an easy exit that the cop would miss and go into cooldown, the cop would despawn behind me, and I'd get away without even trying. But then, all of a sudden, on heat 3 or 4, things pick up quick and you've got rhinos slamming you from all angles while 10 tuned GTOs tail you, trying to pit maneuver you, and roadblocks are set up at every turn. The difficulty scaling just feels a bit all over the place. This is definitely more of a minor issue, but I really do feel like with just a bit more work, the difficulty progression of the cop chases and heat levels could have been improved. I really don't think the system is bad outright. In many ways, Most Wanted's cops and pursuit mechanics are unrivaled to this day. These are just some imperfections and signs of aging in an otherwise great mechanic. Alright, now to continue on with other gameplay elements, I've gotta come back to the fast travel, which I think is the only mechanic in Most Wanted that is outright bad. I feel that fast travel, as it's implemented in Most Wanted, was a mistake. You can fast travel practically everywhere, to every race, to every challenge, even to the instant start of a pursuit anywhere on the map. Instead of interacting with the world in a natural and organic way, you're interacting with menus, teleporting around right to where you need to be. 
This makes the open world feel pretty useless. Fast travel is always a balance of finding how much convenience to give the player without hurting the gameplay experience, and I just feel like the pendulum was swung too far here. In my eyes, the game would have been better if instead fast travel only let us choose different safe houses to go to around the map, still letting us quickly get to the region of Rockport we wanted to be in, while also giving us time to explore and experience the open world on its own. Having to get into pursuits by actually agitating and getting a cop's attention would be better. Having to actually drive to race starts would be better. And having to actually find the right run-ups to speed traps would be better. It sucks because to me, Rockport is a great city to drive around in. The soundtrack slaps, and I wish I was encouraged more by the gameplay systems to just cruise the city and jam out to this 2005 time capsule of absolute bangers. Rockport is a good map, but you just never really get to experience it going through the main campaign, and I really wish I could have seen it light up and come alive at night. In contrast to the game surrounding Most Wanted, I do have to say that the open world experience is significantly better both in Carbon and Underground 2. Those worlds just feel more alive and more varied with more to do, and honestly, driving at night just feels better for a street racing game. Maybe this is a hot take, but I think if Most Wanted had a more limited fast travel system and a day-night cycle, it would have been a way better game. Alright, now I want to wrap up this review by talking about the story, one of the most praised elements of Most Wanted. It opens with you feeling like you're at the top of the world, coming to Rockport with your sick M3 to take on the street scene, and right away you're introduced to two major villains on different sides of the story. Cross, the sergeant hellbent on ending street racing in Rockport, and Razor, the driver that sabotages your M3 and essentially steals it to get to the top of the blacklist. You're set up with great motivation for revenge right away. You want to climb up the blacklist so you can kick Razor's butt and get your car back. Once the prologue ends and you're kinda set loose to climb the list, the story does take a bit more of a back seat, but it's never out of the picture completely, because the gameplay loop itself does tie in so directly with story progression. You also get pretty regular voiced messages from your ally in the street scene, Mia, and a guy that never really gets explained, Raj, who expresses his distrust towards Mia throughout the story. Of course, by the end of the game, you take down Razor once and for all, the rest of the Blacklist members are there to see it when suddenly, cops show up on the scene, Mia reveals herself as an undercover agent, and tosses you the keys to the M3 for one final getaway. As you escape, Cross confronts Mia wondering how she let the player get away. You've got to hold out for 5 minutes of heat level 6 when Mia calls and gives you an exit location. And if you make it across the bridge, you beat the game and are on your way to Palmont City and Need for Speed Carbon, where the story continues. The story in Most Wanted is good, great even, for a racing game of its time. It's cheesy and campy, but that's part of its charm, and it doesn't break any boundaries or tread new ground like Driver San Francisco, but it's exactly what I would want out of a Need for Speed game. It doesn't get in the way or feel out of place, it just carries the gameplay along and gives real, good motivation to press on, get revenge, and see what happens. And for what it's worth, even though I called pretty much right away that Mia was undercover, I actually thought she would full on betray us, so the big twist did still maintain an element of surprise for me. For the story, I think Most Wanted is a high point of the Black Box era, and the franchise as a whole, and it did a great job of hinting at our history in Underground, while also leading directly into Carbon. So, Need for Speed Most Wanted. What do I think playing it for the first time 17 years after its release? The story and progression are, in my eyes, unmatched in the franchise. It's a good game. It's a great Need for Speed. But each and every game in the franchise has its flaws, and Most Wanted is no exception. It is still remarkable what Black Box was able to release on a yearly launch schedule back in the mid-2000s. The quality of games that came out of Black Box is still unmatched by modern titles, and Most Wanted absolutely stands alongside the other greats of that time. Thanks for watching this video everyone, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.